In a bid to strengthen international partnerships and promote local investment and wealth creation, President Bola Tinubu has held meetings with the leaders of Germany, South Korea and India on the sidelines of the G20 summit. According to presidential spokesman Ajuri Ingelali, President Tinubu discussed agricultural, defense and fintech prospects with India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi, manufacturing collaboration with South Korean President Yoon suk Yo, and economic cooperation with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz. President Tinubu also had informal exchanges with European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen and World Bank President Ajay Banga, among others. Although Nigeria is not a member of the G20, Tinubu was invited to the summit by the Prime Minister Modi. Right, the President has been busy. Yeah. By. I mean, the President has been busy. Yes, uh, some commendation there coming by uh, President Biden as regards uh, leadership, as regards what happened in Niger. Uh, that's quite double-edged, you know, because a lot of people will say otherwise. A lot of people will say, maybe we're quite impetuous. We should have talked to the Nigerians a little longer before we threatened that we're going to go in there and invade, you know. But the Americans pretty much wanted us to take a tough, definitive stand. Hence, uh, the President Biden saying kudos to President Tinubu as regards strong leadership. Uh, concerning also talking to foreign leaders for trade and investment, yeah, which is a good one, which is what we want. But... Until it materialized, we cannot say, oh, this has been successful. It takes a lot of effort to be able to actualize what we have talked about. You can sound off rhetoric, yes, but until the Germans now come in and say we want to build industries here and put money into this economy, then that's when it will have materialized. And these things are not new. In the 70s, we had the proliferation of a lot of foreign companies coming into Nigeria. We had the likes of Peugeot Automobile of Nigeria. We also have Volkswagen of Nigeria. And these companies were here until the economy started to go awry in the late 80s, and they left. In fact, speaking of Germany, we have a long time standing partnership with Germany. Germany in the 18, late 1800s used to be one of our biggest trading partners. In fact, as at 19... As at 1898, there was a particular advert on the Lagos Weekly Record that showed that there was a steamroller, a line direct from Lagos, Nigeria to Hamburg. It was run by C. Woman. It was called the Woman Line, where Nigerians could go to Germany and vice versa. The Germans too could come here. A direct line that passed through Plymouth to Germany. And the likes of Gottlieb Glassy were prominent German businessmen in Nigeria that added a lot to the economy here. So are we potentially going to reverse all of that we used to have? And for further reading, you can check Ed Kiazo's book. He wrote an extensive book on Nigeria and German trade relations that date back to hundreds of years. Are we going to get back to those days? And the other question will be, how can we also build our own small businesses here, you know, to be like what the Germans call the Mitchell Starts? They are all small businesses that are now multinationals all over the world. I'm also happy we talk to the Koreans. How can we also help our small businesses to be like the shables of the Koreans? That's what we should also think about. I'm also happy we talk to the Indians. How can our businesses also be like the Indians, the Indujas and the likes that are coming to invest here? So in all of this, the talk is good, but we want to see results on ground. Well, on the whole, I think it's been very good outing for President Tinubu, who I say, uh, incidentally, is the chief uh, foreign affairs officer of the country. Every other person will just be assisting him. And he's been uh, in India, New Delhi, uh, for almost a week now. And during the period, he used the opportunity to attract investment. A figure of $14 billion has been put to that. Uh, securing commitments from different, uh, you know, uh, Indian companies uh, on the basis of cooperation. Nigerian business people also had the opportunity to participate, you know, in what is called the B20. So in terms of the optics, uh, you say it's very good outing. Along the lines of what uh, the presidency calls economic development diplomacy. And then, of course, uh, when the uh, summit itself uh, started, Nigeria maybe not being a member, of course, as we know, uh, got the opportunity to pump hands, 
to take pictures, to meet with world, world leaders. And in this regard also, President Tinubu was stressing economic diplomacy, key partnership with key countries like Germany, yes, of course, India, yes, of course, and then South Korea. And these are countries with which we already have trade partnerships. But the thing is how to deepen it and how to follow through. Now, many of these international summits that we attend, I've, I've kept saying, we may sign 1,000 MOUs. Those MOUs will amount to nothing if we don't follow up. So the ball is now in the court of the uh, foreign affairs uh, team of the country to make sure that you know, all those assurances, all those pledges, you know, that Nigeria you know, follows up you know, uh, in, in, in various regards. The other thing to note also is that, yes, uh, Nigeria may not uh, be a member of the G20, but President Tinubu used the opportunity of his uh, appearance there to stress the point that the uh, G20 will be incomplete without Nigeria. But the thing, of course, is that, look, you are only invited to the party on the basis of your strength. Now, as of today, there are about 23 uh, uh, countries in the, in the uh, G20, as it were, or maybe 21 or 22 or so. If you count the individual countries and then you count the European uh, Union as a block and also the African Union, which had just been uh, admitted. But if Nigeria says, oh, we have to be a member of the G20, do we have what, what it takes? Do we have that competitive edge, that competitive advantage? to be identified as an industrialized, you know, developed country. So that, for me, exists only at the level of aspiration. But to see President uh, Tinumbu with all the photo ops, with the commendation from uh, President Biden and others, including even the South Korea president, who has been invited to visit Nigeria, and the uh, German president, who has also said he too will visit Nigeria in October. It, it gives uh, a veneer of uh, legitimacy on the international scene, although the real legitimacy <laughs> can only come from the Nigerian people. But it shows international acceptance. And we've seen President uh, Tinubu, you know, showing up as chairman of ECOWAS, showing up at the African Union, and now at the uh, G20. So all of this, when you add together, you know, gives the government, you know, or the administration a certain kind of momentum uh, that you cannot ignore. And incidentally, he leaves, uh, you know, um, New Delhi, and he goes straight to the Middle East, you know, uh, uh, Abu Dhabi, again, in search of, you know, investments uh, from that flank, from the, the Middle East. So you see uh, President Tinubu, somebody who knows the game, and he's, he seems to be playing the game very well. But the ceremonies are not enough. The photo opportunities are not enough. What will be important, what will be of interest to us as Nigerians, will be concrete deliverables. How can we use all of these partnerships to transform Nigeria not into a provider of raw materials for the developing, uh, developed world, but also as a center of production, of creativity, of you know, opportunities for the average uh, Nigerian, and not as a dumping ground, and not as a mono-economy, that when you look at foreign trade, which uh, Rutus was looking at uh, last week, all you see there is just, uh, you know, we export petrol, uh, crude oil, and then we import petrol, and then we export uh, petrol oil, whereas there are vast opportunities, you know, within this economy. And we hope that this economic development diplomacy, using the term again, will translate into, you know, greater activity within the economy for the benefit of the Nigerian people, beyond photo opportunities. Absolutely. Uh, so investment, investment, investment is um, one of the key takeaways from uh, Nigeria's presence at G20 summit, as has already been established. Nigeria is not a member of G20, even though there are questions that have been raised even around that with regards to it um, being not being one of the uh, most advanced economies in the world, or most advanced countries in the world. However, the president has tried to leverage his attendance based on invitation by the Prime Minister of India at the G20 summit to hold some key conversations and discussions with some countries that were present. I'd like to focus on the South Korean um, engagement, especially with the president of South Korea, who had mentioned that uh, South Korea investors were interested in three areas in Nigeria. One, education. Two, uh, technology. Three, 
energy. And this is quite important because when we look at South Korea and some lessons on th or things that we can glean from the nation in terms of investment, then there are a number of things that we can possibly um, work out with regards to a relationship to benefit both countries. In education, South Korea is actually one of the most advanced when it comes to their what is described as a militant approach to education. In fact, there are a number of similarities shared with Nigeria in terms of aspirations being edged um, on how educated you are. In fact, South Korea is said to have one of the most educated workforce in the world. And this has come about by a very dedicated and intense address with regards to education from basic education right through to tertiary education. And because this has come up quite strongly in this particular administration and its economic impact on a nation, then it's something that we could possibly look to having some form of um, relationship where we can borrow some, you know, there's some learnings we can gain from um, the South Korean model. The United Kingdom has praised uh, the South Korea for its investments in education, the same with um, the United States, especially during Barack Obama. And so perhaps there are some areas that we can um, learn, pick out from. One of the, the things they've mentioned is that South Korea is, is driven to ensuring that there is a translation from going from basic education, secondary education to tertiary edu education and being able to offer quality education. So we welcome that investment in Nigeria. In terms of technology, when we look at technology across the world, you cannot talk about technology and its advancement, especially broadband penetration, without looking at South Korea. And that's something else. And the Minister for um, Digital Economy, Communications and Digital Economy, has been briefing. We check his well, Twitter page, social media handle. He's been talking about some key conversations he's had with some, you know, in, in, on, you know at the G20 summit. And then finally, of course, energy, bio fuel and how it has impacted electricity in South Korea is something to also study. And hopefully, um, as the president has mentioned, beyond the conversations, it's also to sustain and maintain the attraction he's going to sell to the international community as to why they should and must invest in Nigeria at this time. A number of things to talk about, and I'm sure that when Professor Mbola Jiakiemi joins us later on in the show, we'll have um, some time to dissect some of those conversations and see perhaps how Nigeria can position itself better as investing investment destination in the next few months and few years to get that revenue that we need you know, um, critically at this time. We'll move on to our next story, and that is that a British Royal Navy ship, HMS Trent, arrived Lagos yesterday from Ghana. The ship is on a six-day port call at the Apapa port in Lagos. The visit is geared towards strengthening the bilateral relations between Nigeria and the United Kingdom, as well as enhancing maritime security in the Gulf of Guinea. Addressing journalists on board the ship, Commander Tim D. Langford of the British Royal Navy Commanding Officer of HMS Trent, alongside the British Deputy High Commissioner Johnny Baxter, expressed their commitment and cooperation with the Nigerian Navy. In 2021, we came alongside. Nigeria remains a preferred partner for the um, uh, for the United Kingdom. Uh, we've got some close and historical ties um, with the uh, with the Nigerian Navy, um, and, and I think we would have been straight back the following year if it hadn't have been for the global pandemic. And, and it was unfortunate, I think, for all of us that we didn't have the opportunity to come straight back. Looking towards how we can identify potentially uh, future solutions for uh, countering uh, insecurity uh, within the Gulf of Guinea uh, and uh, and the region. Uh, looking at uh, activities. Uh, such as uh, counter piracy, counter narcotics activity, uh, and other illicit and illegal activity that takes place on the on the high seas, um, uh, such as uh, the uh, increasing trend of things like illegal fishing uh, and unauthorized fishing activity uh, in individual nations' um, uh, territorial uh, waters and coastlines. Um, but but uh, a lot of the discussion will definitely centre around. Um, counter piracy activity is one of the things that I think that um, all nations um, uh, have got a responsibility um, to address. This visit is a fantastic tangible evidence of the UK's position and how important relationships with countries like Nigeria are. We work together, we are pleased to be supporting the Nigerians. We're very clear that working together is the only way of resolving the kind of problems that are facing the Gulf of Guinea and it's good that the UK can provide a positive role in that. Nigeria is a massive uh, country for Africa. It has the second largest economy. It has the 
but the largest population and for all of us, for Africa and for the UK, it is critical that Nigeria is stable, is safe and is prosperous and that's what we want to achieve. And within that, it is fantastic to see that trade between Nigeria and the UK is currently valued at £7.6 billion and that has been increasing dramatically. Hi. Hi. So, I mean, this story just shows the partnership between Nigeria and Britain, bilateral partnership. We all know how much the Gulf of Guinea spans. And uh, it's not only the UK government that does this. There's also one the Americans don't call, uh, the, the, the Americans also partake in called the Urban Game Express that they normally have every year, which is, you know, to deepen maritime security. They get their people in. There are a lot of games around, you know, the stretch of the Gulf of Guinea. Uh, that spans many nations, in fact, that spans uh, a lot of nations across this African coast. And uh, it is just, like they said, uh, to be able to deepen the fight against, you know, piracy on our waters, narcotics trade and all of that. I mean, for one too many times we hear narcotics trade and piracy on our water. And also, you know, to be able to deepen the fight against crude oil theft. Increasingly, we are hearing a lot of crude oil theft across our waters. Only recently across the stretch, you had... Um, uh, Tantita and the Navy going neck and neck as regards chasing a particular vessel that wanted to take uh, crude oil out. So it deals with all of that. It's just providing that level of maritime security across our waters and the British is doing it just like the Americans would do and all of that. But I think going forward, what is paramount is when will Africa be able to effectively build its own naval capacity to be able to secure its waters? Uh, this idea that it is only foreign nations that have bigger naval capacities that will help us and lead the way and all of that. Africa should be able to grow beyond all of this. You know, if you look back, most of the African nations gained their independence in 1960 and predominantly they don't have adequate naval capacity. And I think that should be the real trust of the matter. Well, the HMS uh, Trent, you know, is on an African mission and has been deployed to West Africa for a period of uh, three months. And the issues, as has been pointed out in that uh, video, is about checking piracy, enhancing maritime security, illicit trafficking along the Gulf of Guinea. There's a body called Friends of the Gulf of Guinea, you know, uh, with regard to ensuring maritime security uh, within that zone. Now, the Gulf of Guinea being one of the most notorious, uh, you know, of its type, the other Gulf that is also equally notorious is the Gulf of Aden, you know, in Africa. And so you have the British, you know, sending this warship on a mission to Africa. But it's not, it's not just about cooperation. There's also enlightened self-interest in the matter. Along the Gulf of Guinea, the British trade, they, they, they have trade running to about six billion pounds per annum, you know, within the Gulf of Guinea. And the Gulf of Guinea, so even for the British, you know, security is important, as it is important to other countries. Part of it, of course, is cooperation, collaboration, and uh, the Nigerian armed forces, you know, we seem to have had a long-standing relationship. But the issue is, do we have the capacity? Not just in Nigeria, but let's say West Africa. Why is it that African countries are unable to patrol, monitor, secure the Gulf of Kenya? That's uh, part of the uh, challenge that we have here. You know, if you look at uh, under international law of the sea, you know, I mean, you have the responsibility to prove, to, to secure you know, your, your, your coastline, your, you know, uh, maritime zone. But we seem to drop the ball all the time. And that's why in Nigeria, we're always talking about crude oil theft. We're always talking about, you know, uh, piracy, illicit trafficking. Uh, but now that the uh, Tinubu government appears to be focusing on what he calls blue economy, now securing the maritime zone should be a priority for that administration beyond just creating this new ministry of uh, uh, marine and uh, uh, blue economy that we've been uh, talking about. So at the level of co collaboration, fine. But we also need to develop the capacity. I read a recent interview by uh, President Obasanjo in which he was talking about the number of uh, ships that he bought at a time and how those ships were, you know, how they were just mismanaged. We have something we call the Nigerian Ship Pass Council. We have all these, you know, institutions that are they functioning. That is the question. Beyond the ceremony of just saying uh, a British warship, uh, HMS uh, Trent is visiting and all that. No. The real substance of it is securing the maritime zone and developing that blue economy 
in, in a sense, in a manner that it will be to the benefit of uh, the Nigerian economy. Yeah, well, according to the commander, commanding officer, Commander Tim Langford, he had mentioned that part of their um, task in docking here in Nigeria um, as part of the Friends of the Gulf of Guinea is to build capacity and to train. And I believe that that's one area where we can leverage. But beyond the training and building of capa building capacity, because this is not the first time HMS Trent has docked um, here you know, on, our, on our coastline, it is also the ability to take it forward. So number one, the will to actually, when it comes to training and capacity building, to then replicate that for our own Navy. And then number two, of course, one of the challenges we've had, even though quite an, you know, a huge percentage of money is allocated to the defense um, in the budget, is funding as well. Because if we must secure, or if we will be able to secure our coastline as, you know, as a nation, we must also be able to get the funding and tackle corruption. Referring again to that interview that former President Olusha Gombasanjo had said, whereby they would buy ships, and then you know, there was a lot of corruption around the way it would be bought and resold to the the Nigerian government, and just that our oh, some ships missing that were paid for, lack of accountability, especially with regards to securing our coastline. So th those are some of the issues. However, in its own um, way, the United States has, um, oh, um, HMS, the UK, my, my, I beg your pardon, has um, worked with Nigeria in this regard, and their capacity or what they're hoping to do is to work together for their own interests, because they do have um, quite um, heavy trade on the on the coastline, but also very importantly as well, the benefit for us as Nigeria is to build capacity, is to have our officers trained, is to hopefully be able to build our own security um, operations on that coastline.